Hi everyone, I am super, super excited because today I received this package from the lovely Helen Elliston, who we all know as the fantastic colouring book illustrator and creator of the Colourist Special Effects books. And I know that this package is going to have the new book inside, which I'm really just, I cannot wait to see it. Um, but obviously there's more stuff inside too, so I thought I would unbox this on camera. All I've done is taken off my address, so that obviously I'm not posting that online. And we're going to open it together, see what's inside. Okay, so it's got this beautiful gold paper on the top. I'm really, really excited to see what's inside. Um, I'm going to save this actually. This is really nice paper. I'm going to have to ask Helen where she got it from. Um, okay. Oh, so the first thing looks to be a photo frame. Now, what could possibly be in the frame? Let's have a look. Oh, wow. So this is, it's coming out, but this is one of Helen's original works. And I did mention to Helen ages ago that I would love to have a piece of her art on my wall and lovely Lady Blesser has sent me a piece of original artwork and this is absolutely lovely. Just look at all the different colours. Can you see, I'm hoping the light's not affecting that, but all the different colours in this dandelion head. That is gorgeous and the green backing as well really makes it stand out and pop. That is going straight on my wall here in my dining room where I do all of my videos from. I hesitate to call it my studio or anything like that. But thank you very much, Helen. That is gorgeous. Ah, right then, what's next? Lots and lots of layers to unpack. It's like Christmas. Okay, so this is like a, it looks like a binder. It's got a little button on the front. I don't know if you can see. What do we have inside? Okay. <laughs> so the first thing that I can see is a toilet roll, <laughs> which I think must be referencing the, the great toilet roll debacle of March, April 2020, when it literally went out of stock everywhere for no reason. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. So this is it's looking like a bit of a COVID-19 themed box. Um, we've got some antibacterial hand sanitizing wipes. <laughs> uh we have oh my goodness it's a color with claire kit kat so i don't know whether you guys in america have kit kats over there but it's basically a chocolate bar that's um wafers and they have little snap off fingers of the wafer and this one is a color with claire one i don't think i can eat this this is just going to be um a, a piece of merchandise that will stay <laughs> stay on my uh, desk for for a long time to come i think that's really really fun uh what else do we have oh my goodness so we have a face mask with my logo on it. Can you imagine me going out wearing this? <laughs> I would feel so embarrassed, but it's absolutely fantastic. I feel like I'm gonna be wearing this around the house. I might even force one of my kids to wear it when they go out. <laughs> Little bit of free advertising for me there. Oh, that is lovely, oh my goodness. So, oh, this is great. What else do we have? Another Colour with Claire themed product. So let me just see if I can figure out what this is. Oh, it's a scented sachet. So I guess these are the things that go in your wardrobe or in your drawers to keep everything nice and fresh. So we've got the Colour with Claire logo. I don't, oh, it smells lovely. What does it smell like? I can't, I don't know what it smells like, but it smells lovely. That is gonna go, oh, I see, you hang it like that. So that is gonna go in my wardrobe. Colour with Claire merch everywhere we go. <laughs> And of course, the book. So this is the thing that I've been most excited about. I mean, everything else is just fantastic and it's really, really fun of Helen to put together this box for me to open, for you to see and have a little bit of a laugh. Um, but the book is what we're all really here for, isn't it? So I'm gonna get all of this out of the way, make sure that there's nothing else that I've missed. This is gonna be really handy as well, this uh, box file. Let me see, just make sure there's nothing else I've missed. So all lovely gold tissue paper that I will definitely save. So first, before we get into the whole uh, review of the book, I've got to say a massive, massive thank you to Helen for this. Um, I knew that she was going to be sending a box, but I didn't know what was going to be inside. So it's really, really great to have something to unbox on camera and show you. And as I said, just have a little bit of fun, have a laugh. I've got some extra toilet roll because you never know when that whole thing's going to happen again. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so, so much, Helen. This is, this is fantastic. 
Okay, so the book. Now, if you don't have the previous three colorist special effects books, this is me saying to you, please try your best to get them because they are an invaluable resource to up-leveling your coloring skills, honestly. So I do tutorials on YouTube. A lot of people do coloring tutorials. But for me anyway, it's very much a trial and error. So some work better than others. Sometimes it's just a technique that I think looks kind of cool, but it's very simple and it's not done from a place of someone who really knows what they're talking about. Unlike these books, you are being taught by a professional artist in these books. Helen is first and foremost a painter. You can see from the piece of artwork that she put in the package, you know, she is a fantastic artist and knows what she's on about. So please, please do get yourself these books. If you can, they are invaluable. So let's have a look inside the book. Welcome to Colorist Special Effects 4. This book is jam-packed full of even more step-by-step -step guides, cool and fun stuff and techniques to improve your skills. So if you follow Helen on Facebook, her page is called Helen Claire Art. She'll be adding printable practice sheets that you can print out at home and practice even more of the techniques in this book. So do follow her on Facebook. Now, Helen uses Prismacolor Premier pencils in these books, for the most part anyway. Don't worry if you don't have the Prismacolor pencils, just try and convert the colours as best you can to whatever pencil brand you have. I do have some free charts that you can download where I've already converted Prismacolors to different pencil brands, for example, Polychromos, Arteza, I think I did, um, and a few different ones. So you can download those if you like, but if I don't have a chart for your particular pencil brand, please let me know, and if I have those pencils, I'll do my best to create a chart for you. Uh, she's dedicated the book to her lovely grandparents who loved seeing her drawings as the book developed and she's listed her colouring books that she's done as well. So very, very talented lady. Now let's see what is in the contents for this book. We've got several different categories, edible incredibles, bold backgrounds, beauty of nature, cool stuff and mystical. So lots of different things for you to get your teeth into. We start off with edible incredibles. Now, First things first, I want to make it super clear that I have had Helen's express permission to show you every single page in this book. Now, I know from previous experience of reviewing these kind of books that a lot of people in the comments get a little bit worried that I'm giving away the secrets, that there's no point in buying the book if you've seen it already. There is a point in buying the book. You want to hold this in your hands. You want to be able to actually do the tutorials with the piece of line work that Helen's given you on the same page and take your time with it. You know, you don't want to be squinting, looking back at a screen, trying to figure out what's going on. You do need the book. And Helen is very, very happy for me to show you exactly what you're getting. I know a lot of people will just quickly flip through it uh, because they're worried about that and that's fine. But I've had Helen's permission. In fact, she wants me to show you all of it so you can see exactly what it is you're buying. Okay, so first things first, we have candy corn, which I know is a very popular sweet, particularly in Halloween for you guys in the US. It's not something we have in this country. I don't think I've ever seen candy corn in the UK. Uh, we also have a glossy red pepper. And this is a really good one for me to show you Helen's tutorial process. So you can see that we've got a step-by-step -step of every single new pencil, new color that Helen has put down. Now, what Helen does to make it easier on us is all of the steps apart from the very last are done digitally. And I very, find it very hard to say the word digitally, uh, but she does them all on her iPad or whatever graphics tablet she uses. And I know a lot of people worry about that because they think, well, it's not, you know, done in pencil, so I can't see um, what it looks like for real. But there is a very, very good reason for that. If Helen did all of these steps in coloured pencil and scanned them in, it would be very, very difficult to see each individual layer that she's putting on because pencils blend and you wouldn't be able to see properly where the next layer goes. So as you can see, with the digital um, examples here, we've got the first layer of poppy red and then the pink, which is very, very defined. Again, the hot pink, you can see it's different to the previous pink. You can see exactly where she's put it and that is why she does it. Now, don't worry, she doesn't do everything digitally. As I've said, the very, very last step is always this object colored in pencil and scanned in. So Helen has colored this by hand in coloured pencils just as you will be doing when you use this book and she's done it on every single one of the tutorials just to make sure that they work. Helen's not going to put something out and just do it on digital um, you know, iPad or whatever if she knows that everyone's going to be using pencils because how can she know that it works properly? 
and it blends and it makes sense using pencils. So long story short, waffling short, Helen will always have done it herself in pencil by hand to make sure the technique works and you will always see that as the very last step. So we've got lemon and lemon slices, which is super handy because a lot of colouring books, you'll have a fruit bowl and you'll have the whole fruit, but then by the side of it, there'll be a cocktail or something with a lemon slice over the edge of the glass. And they're very, very different things to colour. So it's really handy that she's included both in this book. We've got fresh green peas and glossy green olives. Now, what I really love about Helen's books as well is that she always injects a little bit of her humour in there just to make you smile. So we've got a few different illustrations and little quirky uh, phrases and pictures and things that she just puts in there. And I love her, she's great. So glossy green olives. I don't like olives, do you? I'm one of these people that don't like olives. I think it's very much a love and a hate thing. Uh, but these are stuffed olives, I think. You can see they've got something inside them. What do you put inside stuffed olives? Is it pepper? I don't know. Anyway, we've got pie crust and cherry bakewell pie filling. So the pie crust will be the first thing that you colour and then you can add your own filling inside. So we've got the pastry and then we've got how to colour the icing and the cherry. As you can see, these are digital. And then the last one is pencil. So this is kind of what it should look like when you do it. Then we have a jam tart pie filling. So again, using that pie crust, we've got a different filling for you to do as well. This just looks like you could pick it up and eat it. I absolutely love Helen's work because it's always so bright, so vivid and bold and it really stands out, it's fantastic. We've got a gingerbread person. I still call them gingerbread men. I'm not very PC, I must admit. Um, then we've got a candy cane, a red candy swirl two, red candy swirl three and red candy swirl. So three different sort of views of how to do these. I think they used to be called campinos, didn't they? Um, strawberries and cream sweets. They don't make them anymore. I used to love a campino. Uh, again, you've got a practice bit on every single page so you don't have to keep flicking to different areas of the book, you know, and coming back and looking and then going back you'll have something to practice with on every single page where possible. We've got a chestnut mushroom and then the bottom view of the mushroom and then a mushroom slice. Then we've got sugar coated chocolate, which I believe are Smarties. Again, every single one has been given the color that she's used, Parma Violet, Canary Yellow, Cerulean Blue. We've got rainbow sweets. Now this is something that I've done with my kids. I did it a couple of years ago, actually. I don't know when, it was probably the summer holidays or something when they were bored. But basically all you do is you get some Skittles and you put them in a rainbow on a plate like this. So just put them in a circle like this on your plate. And then you get uh, boiling water out of the kettle, be very careful, and pour it into the center. And all of the colors from the Skittles will start to run into the center of the plate and create this beautiful blended rainbow effect. Again, this is not something that you see. I love Helen's tutorials because they're always very unique and not something that you think about or that you might not see particularly in colouring books. You wouldn't probably see this, but it's something that gives you ideas for backgrounds and things to make your pages really, really unique that no one else is doing. Obviously, people are going to be doing it now, but yeah, I just love her ideas. I don't know where her imagination just comes up with all this. So we've got toast and toast two. <laughs> so this is one of the longer tutorials where you'll need a couple of pages to practice. And then at the bottom, there's another one started in with a wedge of bread, a kind of a sourdough looking bread, which is continued on this page. So different types and textures of bread. We've got a balsamic and olive oil dip and part two of that there. They are so realistic. Helen is just amazing. Then we've got a double page spread of practice sheets. So as I said, on every single page, you will get a little practice thing, a little practice line work to do it on, but then you'll have more to practice on later on in the book. We've got other types of bread, crumpets, bagels, ciabattas. Then we're on to our next category. So this is bold backgrounds. And we've even got a picture of Helen's lovely granddad telling you to give it a go. So crumpled paper background ideas. Now, these backgrounds, I think, are going to be ones that you have to create yourself. So, you know, it's not just going to be something that you would find in a colouring book. You're going to have to draw in the guidelines. And it's really, really easy. Just looking at this one, it's just little, little lines here and there, little boxes, little jagged shapes. And then within those shapes, you make them very, very light. And then around the edges, you add in 
um, your different shadows and things like that. And what's great about this is the neon yellow and orange that she's used at the end, just to give like a bit of a glow, a bit of a reflection, and it really, really makes it pop, it's gorgeous. We then have the lace border. So again, just something that you'll have to practice. It looks simple enough, these steps look very, very easy, but again, really effective when it's finished. We've got a leather texture. So you're wanting to render the background of your page with a very, very realistic looking texture. You can do the leather in different colors as well. Then we've got the rainbow oil slick, which is gorgeous. It really, really looks so realistic. And that's probably one that I'm gonna be trying very shortly. Um, then we have the weave pattern. So if you're into zentangling or you know drawing patterns and doodles and things like that, this will give the background of your coloring page a little bit more um, interest and depth then we've got the 3d sphere background which again showing you the convex and the concave um spheres to create this background that very much looks like buttons that you could actually press in and out in and out really really great and here we've got a picture of helen with her lockdown 2020 hair she's so funny um 3d cube so again different colors and you can build these up and create backgrounds with them spice it up by erasing little bits so she's erased a heart and little shapes and things just ideas that you never would think of really but really add to it we've got a geometric background with hexagons so lots of different colors she's used gray green and red which go together really really well and again she's showing you step by step how to build that um that realistic looking geometric background we've got more ideas for geometrics We've got the lattice effect, we've got pyramids, and then lots more practice areas as well. Then we're on to the beauty of nature. So we've got a dandelion. Now this is the one here that she's painted and that she gifted to me that you saw earlier. And it's kind of showing you how to create that very fluffy look of the dandelion. So yeah, again, just really, really exciting to learn how to do these things. This is a pink flower called the camellia. And then we have Cyril the squirrel. <laughs> so how to draw fur. I mean, Helen's tackled fur before in her books, but different kinds of fur, different animals. Uh, very, very handy. We've got the rest of Cyril here. And then we've got a pine cone. We've got a conker or a buckeye. I've never heard it called buckeye. Is that something you guys in the US call it? We call it a conker. We often put, put a, a hole through it, put some string through it and just bash them at each other. I think it was banned from schools a long time ago. <laughs> People getting bashed in the head with conkers. Um, then we've got the open spiky conker. So this is how it looks when it's first opening up. We've got an acorn, a pine tree, and again, little bits of tips will be interspersed throughout this. So Helen's telling you to keep your pencil point very sharp. Um, she shows you which kind of techniques to use, whether she wants you to scumble or use flicks. Now then, what do we have here? Pictorial depth demonstrated in a forest drawing. How to create distance in the background. Keep it pale and less detailed. Foreground tips, background tips. This is really, I mean, I used the word invaluable like twice earlier, but it really is invaluable. If you wanted to become a better artist you know not just colorist feather inspirations here so i believe in helen's previous book she did actually do feathers and this is just some extra in, uh, inspiration for you to create some funky looking feathers so again we've got our practice pages from that section now we've got cool stuff so i'm guessing this is going to be awesome we've got the crackle ring now then this is something that i haven't seen for a very very long time so it's a ring with that glass kind of crackle look around it and the pearl in the middle or any kind of gem really this is a gem from one of her previous books and i believe she did this pearl previously as well yep yeah, color of special effects one and yeah just giving it that very very glassy look we've got a simple pot texture for your outdoor plant pots glazed red mushrooms so the glazed bit is really what makes these pop. It looks absolutely incredible. We've got rosettes. So how to colour that ribbon, that silky, satiny kind of ribbon. We've got ice cubes. So I've always found it really difficult to try and create that look of um, glassiness and transparency. But here she's showing you exactly how to do it. Fantastic. We've got something spooky. We've got a spooky eyeball. So again, this is something that's done over two pages, building up. The, uh, the creepy looking eyeball here. That's something I'm definitely gonna be trying as well. You know you know me. Uh, emerald eye, 
so this is something like a fantasy kind of eye maybe a, a creature a cat or a fantasy girl then we've got a wax seal showing you how to make it look deep and you know as if you've pushed it down into the paper and there's some extra um, inspiration for wax seals this is the wax seal slash twine envelope so showing you how to create this gorgeous ratty looking twine uh, that you might wrap up your envelopes with and you can practice that all along here drawing your own letters and symbols we've got purple stained glass we've got blue stained glass and textured stained glass so showing you again how to create these individual mosaic kind of tiles for your stained glass we've got a glass swirl we've got a bumpy texture that you might use in stained glass around the colored pieces really really a lot of thought has gone into this you can see you know just how to create how to create a very realistic looking finished piece so we've got lightning in a bottle the lightning potion fantastic we've got the bubble potion a glowing lava potion this would be fantastic for a lava lamp as well and if you want to know how to color the glass that's in color is special effects book two we've got a smoky spiral potion and a green potion bottle absolutely loving these we've got a genie bottle a blue orb so this really looks like electricity crackling out of this orb she's showing you how to do the smoke as well contemporary eyes so something a little bit again fantastical loving the rainbow colored teardrops something very very different crystal feather clip and aqua hair plait so the crystal feather clip is this one here and as you can see it looks like it has these diamantes just added into it but very very simply done hair plait texture or braids you use your black pen to create this texture and then fill it in with the different colors and there's the rest of it and you can put them together for the clip star trail bird so again if you're wanting to do something really glowy on a black background this is a great one there's the rest of it and then some practice and then at the back we've got some puzzles so again Helen is adding in lots of fun to the book so we've got a word search we've got a odd one out we've got crosswords and I want to make sure that I don't give away yeah these are the answers on the back so don't look <laughs> then we've got a test and a practice area and a couple of free pages just for you to do whatever you want do some drawing try out some of those backgrounds and there we go so book four again just absolutely packed she has not disappointed every single one of her books just includes as many tutorials as she can physically cram in the book and again it's just something that you need if you're wanting to create special unique coloring pages so as usual the link will be in the description to buy this and all of the previous colorist special effects books i really really hope you've enjoyed looking through the book as much as i have enjoyed unboxing that fantastic package that helen sent had a bit of a laugh with me let me know what you think in the description and let me know if you're going to be buying the books thank you so much for watching thank you to helen and i will see you soon on color with claire